Hi, my name is Nicola Davison. I'm an author and a photographer living here in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Um, I have my second novel coming out this month, March 22nd, and it's called Decoding Dot Grey. I thought it would be fun to do a bit of a reading from one of the scenes in the early part of the book that gives you a sense of what Dot's world is like. She's a bit of a misfit, more comfortable around animals than people. Um, she likes to use Morse code as a way to deal with her anxiety. And um, in the beginning of the novel, she rescues a crow who she calls Toby. And she's not allowed to keep him at the animal shelter where she works, so she smuggles him home to her little apartment, which is in fact a dank, unfinished basement. So that's where this scene takes place. Before getting the birdcage out of the car, I have a good look at the upstairs windows. The lights are on, but the curtains are drawn. So I pull Toby out of the back seat and head into my abode. I flip the lights on and the crickets go silent. For the moment, I settle Toby on my only piece of furniture, the bed. Magoo, that's not my landlord's real name, but if you met him, you'd call him that too. Said, absolutely no dogs, when he swung open the door to my underground home. I waited for him to continue, but he didn't mention gerbils, guinea pigs, hairless rats, reptiles, a fluctuating population of crickets, or, now that I think of it, injured crows. I don't think Magoo hears us. Even with his hearing aids, I have to speak up, almost shouting. Usually I have to repeat myself before I can be sure he's understood. I suspect he leaves them out most of the time, turning up the TV to compensate. As a result, I've become familiar with the characters on Coronation Street. He must tape them so he can watch any time of day, the sad trumpet and the opening sequence working its way through the thin ceiling every half hour in the evening. All eyes are on me as I shuffle the stacks of cages around to find a good spot for Toby. The cages form a condo complex. I make a gap just big enough for Toby and drape a towel over one side so he can't intimidate the rest of the brood. After feeding everyone, I let Toby explore the bathroom. I brush my teeth, staring at a concrete wall. Magoo said he'd put a mirror in but when he showed me the place, but he must have forgotten. I've decided to embrace the lack of reflection. It's not like I have to see my face. I don't wear makeup. So now, with the exception of the mirrors I use for driving safely, I avoid them completely. Mum would have liked the idea. Had she thought of it, we'd have done it as one of our challenges. Kind of like the month we ate all our meals blindfolded. Anything that required utensils was either tedious or dangerous, i.e. piping hot spaghetti. Before Toby can fall into the toilet bowl, I carry him back to the cage. He watches as I slip out of my overalls and climb into bed with my t-shirt on. Night, everyone, I say. I push the button for my white noise CD. It muffles Magoo's multiple voyages to the bathroom and his wall-shaking snores. Who knew you could buy a compact disc of traffic noise? Atlantic Canada's Sleep King did. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to find out more information, you can go to my website, which is nicoladavison.ca or snickerdoodle.ca. I have a website that is both about my writing life and uh, my photography, so you can contact me there. If you're interested in getting a signed copy of the book, you can get in touch with me that way. You can also find it online at the major retailers like Indigo and Amazon, or even better, one of your independent bookstores near you. Thank you.